Start game now. Welcome, retro fans, to Retro Reviews with the Nosewear Gamer. I am your host, the Nosewear Gamer, and today we are going to continue our ABCs of Retro video game series where we go through the letters of the alphabet one letter at a time, pick a game for each letter, and review them to find out if they are good or not. And today we are on the letter E. Now, on Facebook, I gave this hint when it came to this game. It is the part of the store where Iceman likes to shop. Now, I am joined by Iceman today. Say hello, Iceman. I'm joined by Iceman, and you might be thinking, hmm, maybe the freezer section, maybe, I don't know, what other section? Wait a minute, he's an X-Man. You know where X-Men like to shop in the store? They like to shop in the Exile, that's right. <laughs> I'm the only one laughing, aren't I? So today we're going to look at Exile for the Sega Genesis system. Now, I remember when I was younger seeing this game in ads for the Turbo Graphics CD player. I think that came out first, and then it came for the... Sega Genesis system. This is uh, published by Renovation, and it, it is a one-player game where you play kind of a Mad Max kind of figure. Uh, it's kind of like Mad Max meets Aladdin, and you can kind of get that vibe looking here at the back of the box. It has a, nice, a couple screenshots, only two, not too many, but I really dig the artwork on the front. Uh, it's very, uh, very, very cool in my opinion. I don't know if you can if it's easy to see but check out that guy he has three visors on his helmet is he a spider is he some sort of weird creature who knows but yeah this this artwork shows lots of action so here's what we're going to do we're going to take this bad boy pop it into our sega genesis and see if exile for the sega genesis is any good or not Exile is a 1991 RPG action platformer very similar to the style of Zelda II The Adventures of Link for the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Now in this game you play Sadler and your goal is actually not very clear at all. So let's go ahead and let's look at some other aspects of the game first. Graphically, it does kind of look like an early Sega Genesis game. There's nothing um, outstanding about the graphics, except it does have some good still shots. Occasionally, you will cut away to a still shot for part of the storytelling, and those were rather well done. But on the whole, nothing too spectacular. I thought the music was fair. I thought it was okay. Very Genesis-like. I enjoyed Genesis music. The sounds were, well, they were the sounds. So, uh, yeah, graphics and sound-wise, not the most impressive game. Sometimes there were some good things. So, anyways, let's go back on uh, into the game. When you start the game, you are kind of just thrown into this town. Your first goal is to gather a party. Now, you're going to gather a party of about three people, and you're not allowed to leave the town until you do. And throughout the game, from time to time, you'll have people join your party and leave your party. However, this is not an RPG in the standard fare. The people in your party will not help you per se in the fact that you cannot play as them so even though they follow you around and it looks like it's a role-playing game they're not going to really have any direct involvement as far as you controlling them you will always be Sadler no matter what level you're on and no matter who's in your party and sometimes I even wondered why these people were following me around to begin with anyway you start in a town and you have to make your way to an ant lion den now unlike Zelda in Zelda when you go to an overhead map and you travel in between cities you will hit random encounters. There are no random encounters in this game. Uh, this game is pretty much dungeon based. Now every dungeon is a side-scrolling platformer, but uh, yeah, every dungeon that has its standard fare of enemies and they'll all show up at the same place at the same time. So for instance, in the first level, you go into this ant lion cave and you probably will die. <laughs> Actually, that's what happened to me. The first time I played it, I died a lot just going into the first cave. Uh, the biggest problem was is my character was too weak to begin with. So your first level, uh, first thing you're going to have to do is level up. Now, this game has respawning enemies. So the first thing I did was I found a spot where some little fly-like creatures kept flying at me. I just sat there and just went away at them until I finally did level up. You will get experience and every once in a while it will tell you you've leveled, leveled up. However, you will not regain your health when you level up, so you need to be aware of that. Uh, now, there is one cool thing. Whenever you do leave a dungeon, your health does replenish. 
but uh, sometimes that's easier being said than others. Later on, you will get magic. One of the spells you can use is a warp, and that will take you right out of the dungeon, and that is very useful. As a matter of fact, speaking of the magic, there's a few set of spells. You get everything right off the bat. Once you gain the magic after about 30 minutes of play, once you gain that power, you can use it whenever you want, and you can use any spell. You do not earn any extra spells. However, the only ones I really used in the game was the warp to get out of the caves and the heal. However, I avoided healing myself because it used up all your magic points. So unless it was like a last ditch ever effort, like the last boss, I did not use that, uh, that magic. So anyways, your basic action in the game is swinging a sword. That's right, you jump and swing a sword and that's about it for the whole game. Now, it does have some flaws in the gameplay mechanics. When you jump, if you try and swing your sword in midair, it will stop you right in the middle of air, like you're frozen in time. So if you're going in between platforms, you'll want to land on the platform or get over at least before you swing. There was a few times where I was jumping and an enemy was about to hit me, so I swung my sword and it froze me and that meant I, dro I dropped right in between the platforms and had to go again. That was frustrating sometimes. So the control, uh, takes a little getting used to it works for what it does, but it's there now in each town There are shops you can buy weapons you can buy shields you can buy potions Interestingly enough the uh, most effective potion is called heart poison. I'm not quite sure what's up with that Doesn't sound like it would be uh, helpful, but your main focus is going to be on your weapons getting a new sword getting a new uh, Shield and getting new armor. Uh, I didn't find it too difficult I typically had about enough money or close to it whenever I came into a new town and they had better weapons so you'll find that to be fairly easy. Now, when you're in the towns, you can also go around and talk to the town folk. You can also talk to people in their homes. However, you'll, you won't see the inside of the homes. It's like you duck into the doorway for a second and you see the little speech uh, bubble, the little speech box come up and it'll tell you what you're saying. The only time you'll ever en enter a building is typically if there's a dungeon inside. Some buildings have the dungeon levels within them and typically you will find the dungeons you have to go in either in buildings or in caves that are within the towns themselves you don't find them on the exterior of the map but uh, once you're in there it turns into a bit of a maze some are harder than others and the backgrounds look all the same so it's easier to get confused now the mazes reminded me a lot of Revenge of Shinobi, the final level. If you remember that game, if you ever played that game, at the end you had to go through all these kind of doorways and you weren't sure where it brought you. Everything kind of looked the same and that's how all these mazes are. Thankfully, I, I found my way through fairly easy most of these mazes. Some of them were tougher than others and I got turned around, didn't know quite where I was. And of course, I could always warp out if I ever got too lost. So um, yeah, the dull design was okay. I wouldn't say it was great, but I would say it was okay. Uh, also, um, I'll say this much too, when I did level up, after I leveled up in the first level, I didn't really have very many problems getting through any of the other levels. I didn't really have a big need to level up uh, at all. And as a matter of fact, virtually every boss I met, I beat the first time I faced them. So I didn't find the game too much of a challenge after I did some initial level upping. Uh, the only challenge I would say is the very last battle. Now in the last battle, one thing you will face is a shadow of yourself. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, I think this took some inspiration from Link. And you will also find the final, the uh, final bad dude, not from bad dudes, no Karnov here, but you will face the final bad dude and that will take you quite a while. It took me about 10 to 15 minutes. He wasn't too tough. It's just, it took a while to get his pattern down. And then once you get it, it's just, it's just one of those battles that take forever. I don't know why the last guy was so disproportional compared to the rest of the game. I guess that's just what the developers were going after there. Another interesting thing I found with Exile is that it's a relatively short game. Uh, I was able to complete the whole game in about three hours, and I was expecting it to be longer than that. It also does have battery backup save features. Gives you three slots to save on, so if you do get a copy, you'll want to make sure the battery still works or be ready to replace it. But yeah, three hours is not very long. It's also um, somewhat rare. If uh, you want to get it on eBay, I was looking at some prices, and judging by what I saw, I'd say a loose cart goes for about $15 or $20, and a complete one goes for about $25 to $30. So yeah, it is a little bit more on the pricier side. So let's uh, go ahead and look at how family friendly this game is. Um, it's, it doesn't have too much objectionable stuff in it. Uh, when you die, I think there's a little pool of blood under you. 
when you defeat some of the enemies you see a little blood there is one enemy where the ba by the way they colored him was kind of like black and red when you when you cut him it looked a little bit gory but then they palette swapped him into purple and green and then you're like that's not gory at all so they just did that i also think that there was one dungeon where there's a lot of red water which could probably be blood i'm guessing uh, and other than that, there was one uh, use of very light swearing. I heard this game had a lot of swearing in it. I only came across one use of the word, and that would be dang nabbit, except that's not what they said if you catch my drift. That was the only thing I caught. So I don't know if I missed something. The text can go by really fast, and it is easy to miss things at times. So maybe there's something else there, but I didn't find it going in there. So that's about it. Um, so what did I think of this game overall? Is this a game I would recommend? Well, this game there is a problem uh, and there's a couple of them that really put me off first one is this it's very confusing you really don't have uh, a good idea of what you're doing at all they really did a poor job translating this and even if they did it's one of those stories that just didn't make a lot of sense as a matter of fact when I was playing this game I felt like I was really doing the bad guys bidding I felt like I was almost the bad guy I felt like I was constantly being manipulated and I'm like why am I helping this guy find this artifact what, what's the purpose for me to find this artifact why am I getting this guy a book of spells so he can uh, you know chant up some some anti-barrier protection that's been protecting something why is it being protected why break the barrier why why am I trying to get this dead evil spirit to come back to life this does not make any sense I feel like I was a bad guy and I don't feel like you know, when I'm being the hero, I don't want to be so easily manipulated. I don't want to feel like I'm doing something totally bad. Um, the the other thing is this. This game seems to kind of discriminate against any sort of religious belief at all. Doing some research, it looks like the um, Japanese version of the game went against uh, just about any religion there is in existence. Uh, especially uh, the Christian religion because initially the, uh, the Lucille art army that you're battling I guess was supposed to initially be the Holy Crusaders and it's not that you know people don't do bad things in the name of religion they do but this one wanted to basically throw out any religious ideas at all to the point where it basically said that yeah there's no God that's going to rescue this planet and there is no heaven it'll just all magically become better by itself one day somehow and that kind of put me off you know so if you're kind of spiritually sensitive in that uh, area and you don't like being told like yeah believing in god is foolish and heaven is foolish this may not be the game for you as well so yeah i was just really confused felt like i was a bad guy so i wouldn't recommend this game on that on that uh on that alone so what do i do when a game puts me off this much when the story and this is one of those games where the game wasn't the game itself wasn't bad but the story really put me off let me put it like this if I just rated the gameplay, if there was no story at all, I would give this game probably a 6.5 out of 10. I think it's kind of a middle-of-the-road game. But, because it did leave such a bad taste in my mouth, because it left me being like, I don't know if I really enjoyed playing that game at all, because it kind of left me with a bad feeling, I'm just not going to rank this one. That's right, Exile. I'm going to exile you. How about that? Yeah, I know. Everybody's different. Everyone has different opinions on these sort of matters, and this is just mine, and you know, that's where I'm going to be on that. Uh, I don't think it's something that's going to happen a lot, but it did happen today. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope you got a taste of what this game has for you. And of course, it's up to you to make a decision about games like this. Next up in our ABCs of Retro series is the letter F. Now, I will not give you any hints right now other than you'll have to wait till Friday when the episode is released. I want to give a shout out to all the people who helped me decide which e-game I should do today. First, I want to start out with Jotham. Jotham, I owe an apology to because on previous episodes, I called him Jotham, mispronouncing his name, and I just want to correct that it is Jotham. And to help make things kind of even, everybody else's shout out today will be slightly off. I'll mispronounce him just a little bit just to make things nice and even for everybody. So, first of all, I want to give a shout out to the Rotro Obscura Podcast and all the guys on there that'd be Doob Sweat and Diablick. And I also want to give a shout out to some other guys who helped me on Facebook, Google Plus, and some forums. And that would be Irik and Dustin and J.O. So thank you to all you guys. I really appreciate your help. So anyways, uh, I thank you guys for giving me a little bit part of your day. And I do hope I will see you next time right here on Retro Reviews. Have a good one.